morning. How are you this Monday morning? It is the 5th of October. Pastor Jerry here with another Coffee Break Reflection. Thank you. Thank you. Such a privilege to be able to talk to you this morning. So it's Monday morning. A fresh week's just starting and I imagine there's not just a few of you who are saying, oh, I can't wait till Friday. Remember that popular commercial back in the 80s? I think maybe they played into the 90s as well. Duncan put them on, and the tagline from Fred the Baker was, time to make the donuts. We saw him struggling out of his bed in the pre-dawn hours and staggering for the door, but happy to go and make the donuts. And the phrase has sort of entered our American language as a shorthand way of acknowledging our mixed emotions about going to work. Yeah, go ahead today. Even if you've never seen one of those commercials, if you're like 25 years old, just say to somebody, time to make the donuts, and you'll have an instant recollection. Yeah, they'll know what you mean. One of the byproducts of COVID-19 is a phenomenon that's called burnout. Now, we've always had burnout, but it's become particularly acute in these last eight months. For many of us, the rewards of what we do in our work are being deferred or there are even ongoing responsibilities with increased risks and little of those things in our lives that produce the kind of renewal, the relationships, the ability to hang out with friends, to do things recreationally together that help us to keep our lives from burning out. What's burnout? Burnout is that combination of feelings of cynicism, depression, and anger that rob us of joy and creativity. If you find yourself increasingly short-tempered, you might give some thought to burnout. If you find yourself dreading normal responsibilities that once you felt joy in, you might reflect on burnout. When we feel like it's just time to make the donuts and we don't feel any sense of fulfillment, we don't feel any sense of joy, we feel more like a cog in a machine than a person, yeah, we are at risk for burnout. These are times that put us at great risk for making short-sighted choices and vulnerable to a lot of temptations. People who are in burnout or are approaching burnout often spend too much or quit too soon or divert themselves into things like pornography or abuse alcohol or worse, drugs. Just a few things that we risk. You say, well, that's pretty drastic, Pastor Jerry. No, it's true. It's true. In my calling as a pastor, this time of COVID has tempted many, many pastors to burn out. We give it all we have and we don't see a lot of return. The ministries we valued are either furloughed or They're happening on a very limited basis. We preach week after week to mostly empty buildings. And we can't connect with people that we love in any meaningful way, it seems. And so we risk burnout. But it's not just executives or pastors or doctors that burn out. Mommy fatigue is real. It is, yeah. You know those toddlers? They seem to have endless energy. They're still going when you're ready to sit down. Or those teenagers, they don't seem to care much for the love that you offer them and it leaves you feeling exhausted and depleted. Yep, that's called burnout. Marriages burn out. Yep, spouses who fail to connect and care and prioritize time together grow apart. Marriage gets stale and then it gets burnt. Relationships burn out if they're not tended, if they just become dutiful, centered around doing things but never just being. Christian, here's my real point this morning. Christians burn out. Yeah. They just quit going to worship. They quit serving. They quit reading the Bible. They quit praying. They just feel lifeless, burned over. So what do we do about it? One of the most important things to avoid burnout, and it seems so obvious that I shouldn't need to say it, but I need to remind myself too. One of the most important things we do is we maintain a balance of work and rest. God established a rhythm, the dawn of creation, six days work, one day rest. And yet so many of us work day and night. We're connected 24 seven to our cell phones and work and work emails and demands and texts. 
We don't have the ability so often to take the breaks that once helped to get a, yank us out of that routine. You know, we, we, we don't go to church or we can no longer have a night to hang out with friends or maybe we aren't even willing to take a vacation because of the risk of the virus. It's, it's real. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You won't find relief for burnout in self-indulgence. not what I'm suggesting. But if we think that we can just work our way out of burnout, we're fooling ourselves. Now, of course, you can't recover from burnout by being selfish or walking away from responsibility either. That's a real mistake. And actually, the regret that will follow will only deepen that sense of burnout. There's another issue about burnout besides failing to keep the right priorities, and it's something called perfectionism. If we begin to compare, 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 you know, how is our church doing compared to another church? How is my business doing compared to another business? How is my family compared to another family? How am I compared to my hero? (laughs) That comparison will be a cruel, cruel, cruel poison that will eat away at our hearts. It'll make, us almost imp- it'll make it almost impossible for us to be thankful for the person God made us to be, for the situation that God allows us to be in right now, for the blessings that we are currently enjoying. Hmm. <laughs> Not everybody is going to be an Olympic athlete. Not everybody is going to get to preach like Billy Graham. Not everybody is going to be blessed with the brains of a neurosurgeon or gifted with the compassion of Mother Teresa. That's just the way life is. So if we think that we're not valuable to God because we aren't a superhero or superly gifted, we risk burning ourselves out chasing what's impossible. Who has God called you to be and what has God gifted you to do? Right where you are. I need to ask myself that question too. So is it possible for you and me to live at a high level of productivity and remain fresh and vital and joyful? Yes. How? Well, first of all, renewal is accomplished by choosing our priorities and learning to align our daily choices with what is important, not just what is urgent. No person can do everything, be everything, or make life right for everyone. If you try, you're going to burn out. Yep. One of the most difficult questions in the world to answer, and yet critically importantly, we must answer it, What does God desire of me? As Christians, nothing is more critical than making our choices. Time use, how we spend our money, where we seek our entertainment, where we let our mind be privately, with alignment with the will of God. Because when our values and our actions are in sync, the risk of burnout diminishes significantly. Not only does renewal come from proper priorities, it also comes from something called worship. You know, but I'm going to say it anyway. Worship isn't just something that happens in a church building on a Sunday. Worship is a lifestyle. It's something we cultivate by an ongoing pursuit of the holy. The psalmist says, early will I seek thee. In other words, the first thing I'm going to do every day is I'm going to turn my mind to the thoughts of God. I cannot overstate the importance of hitting life's pause button first, not last, for meditation, for prayer, for scripture intake, for giving God his place. Don't be deceived by that conceit that grips so many of us that says, if I just work harder, I can make life into what I want it to be. If I get up earlier, if I go longer, if I stay later, no, that's a lie that'll kill your soul and turn you into a burnt crisp of a human being. Here's a psalm that invites us to renewal as we close this morning. Listen to these words. They're found in the 63rd Psalm, a psalm of David when he was in the desert of Judah. O God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I've seen you in the sanctuary, I've beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. 
My soul will be satisfied with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I will remember you. I will think of you in the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I will sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. A Psalm of David, Psalm 63. Heavenly Father, thank you today for another Monday morning, for all the opportunities of this week. I pray, Lord, that you would renew us and you would, inst- you would strengthen us, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. I pray for my friends, Lord, maybe this morning, who are feeling like it's just time to make the donuts. I pray, Lord, that you would give them the wisdom to hit the pause button, to renew and refresh themselves in priorities and worship. Lord Jesus, be honored in our words and our thoughts today. This I pray in your holy name. Amen and amen. Friends, thank you so much. It's been a joy being with you this morning. God willing, I'll see you tomorrow morning.